All right, everyone, get ready, because today we're diving headfirst into a case that's colder than a Norwegian winter and way more mysterious, the unsolved death of the Oslo Plaza woman. Yeah, this one has it all. A mysterious death, a possible cover-up, and enough twists to give you whiplash. It's a real head-scratcher. Absolutely. We're talking about a woman found dead in a fancy hotel room back in 1995. And even now, almost 30 years later, nobody knows for sure if it was suicide or something way more sinister. Exactly. And the stuff you sent over, man, let me tell you, it's got enough twists and turns to make a spy novelist jealous. No kidding. To make sure we're all on the same page, though, let's start with the basics. It's May 1995, and a woman checks into the Oslo Plaza Hotel, right? Use the name Jennifer Fairgate. Seems pretty normal so far, right? Well, not quite. Turns out Jennifer Fairgate was probably an alias. This journalist, Lars Christian Wegner, has done some amazing work on this case, and he found inconsistencies with practically everything she told the hotel. The name, the Belgian address she gave, even hints that there might have been another person with her, someone named Lois. It's almost like she just materialized out of thin air. And get this, she didn't use a credit card when she checked in. No payment info whatsoever. I've stayed in some pretty sketchy hostels in my day, and even they wanted a credit card, you know. This is the Oslo Plaza Hotel we're talking about, not some roadside motel. Right off the bat, that tells you either someone messed up big time or Jennifer had some kind of understanding with someone at the hotel. That's when this whole thing starts to get really interesting. Okay, so we've got this woman, who's basically a ghost, checking into a really nice hotel without paying. What happens next? So Jennifer, she pretty much keeps to herself, you know. We know she ordered room service, some bratwurst and potato salad, which you might think, who cares, right? But yeah. that little detail, that's going to come back in a big way later. Ooh, I love it when that happens. It's like a Chekhov's gun, but with bratwurst. Ugh. All right, so she's laying low, enjoying her room service. What could go wrong, right? Well, on the third day, a security guard's doing his rounds, and he hears something that sounds like a gunshot coming from Jennifer's room. Uh-oh. You got it. He radios it in to his supervisor right away. But here's the thing. It takes about 15 minutes for them to actually go into her room. 15 minutes is a long time to wait when you hear a gunshot, don't you think? In a movie, it feels like forever. Exactly. And when they finally get into the room, they find Jennifer dead on the floor. Gunshot to the head, 9 millimeter Browning pistol in her hand. Open and shut case, or so it seemed. Okay, I think we're about to find out that 15 minutes is a very long time in a case like this. But first, a browning, huh? Something tells me it wasn't that simple. You'd be right to be suspicious. Turns out, it wasn't a real browning. It was an older Hungarian copy. Interesting. But an older model? I mean, does that really tell us much? It might, because, get this, there weren't any fingerprints on it. At all. Really? Now, yeah. that is strange. You'd think there'd be something, right? Like, I know they had fingerprint technology back then. Exactly. So if this was a suicide, how'd the gun get wiped clean? And why use an unregistered weapon in the first place? It doesn't really add up. Okay, so the gun's a bit of a mystery. What about everything else? Anything else off about the scene? Oh, yeah, a bunch of things. Remember how that security guard found the gun? still clutched in her hand. Yeah. Well, the forensics experts, they took a look and they said the gun was totally in the wrong position. Her thumb was on the trigger, which I don't know about you, but that's a weird way to shoot yourself, you know, yeah. especially with the recoil from a nine millimeter. Yeah. No, that's not how you, it, yeah. It's way more likely someone put it there after tried to make it look like a suicide. Hold on, so let me get this straight. The gun's wiped clean, it's a weird model, and it was placed in her hand wrong. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? staged. I'm just saying, I'm not sold on the suicide thing. Oh, and it gets even better. The blood splatter analysis that adds another wrinkle to all this. So there was splatter in the room, which makes sense, right? Gunshot, blood. But there was hardly any on her hand. Okay, stop. This is too much. It's like a bad spy movie or something. So we've got an unregistered gun, a weird grip, no fingerprints, and a clean hand. What does it all mean? Well, to me, it sounds like someone went to a lot of trouble to make this look like Jennifer killed herself. But the question is, why go to all that effort? And that brings us to the most interesting part of all of this. Who was Jennifer Fairgate? All right, so we might be dealing with a seriously professional cover-up here. But who was this Jennifer Fairgate? What do we actually know about her? That's the million-dollar question, isn't it? You mentioned earlier she checked in with no luggage. Right. Not entirely true. She did have a briefcase. Ooh, okay, a briefcase. Now we're talking. So what was in it? Cash, jewels, 
Secret plans. Even better. Bullet. Bullets. Yep. For that Hungarian pistol. Wow. Okay, hold on. I'm having trouble picturing this. Who travels with a briefcase full of bullets? Right. It's a little unusual, to say the least. Kind of implies she knew her way around a gun, don't you think? Not exactly tourist material. No, not at all. And speaking of unusual, you're going to tell us about that room service, remember? Oh, yeah. The plot thickens. So they do the autopsy, and guess what they find? Don't tell me poison bratwurst. Not quite. Undigested food. And it matched her last room service order. But here's the kicker. She ordered that meal a full 24 hours before she supposedly died. Wait, so you're saying she died a whole day earlier than they thought? The evidence seems to point that way. It throws that whole timeline out the window, doesn't it? If she died a day earlier. Well, who fired the gun that security guard heard? My head's spinning. We've got a maybe stage suicide, a mystery woman with a briefcase full of bullets, and now the timeline's all messed up. I need a minute to process this. And we're not done yet. Remember how Jennifer gave that Belgian address when she checked in? Yeah, the fake one. Right. Well, there are some interesting theories about that. Some people have connected this case to another case that was happening in Belgium around the same time, the Marc Dutroux case. The serial killer. The one and only. Dutroux's crimes were absolutely horrific. Abducting, torturing, murdering young women shook Europe to its core. I can only imagine. Now, to be clear, they never officially connected Jennifer's case to Dutroux. But the timing is, well, it makes you wonder, right? Definitely makes you wonder. It's kind of a terrifying thought, really. For sure. And despite the DNA analysis they did, which suggested some East German origins, the case is still unsolved. Jennifer Fairgate, whoever she was, she took her secrets to the grave. So to sum it all up, we have a suitcase full of bullets, a suspicious last meal, a possible connection to a notorious serial killer, and a woman who disappeared as quickly as she arrived. It really does sound like something straight out of a spy novel, doesn't it? Totally. So if Jennifer Fairgate was living a double life, what kind of secrets did she take with her? And who was so determined to make sure those secrets stayed hidden? That's the mystery, isn't it? Was she a spy? Involved in some kind of international intrigue, we may never know the full story, but that's what makes these cases so fascinating, isn't it? They remind us that sometimes truth really is stranger than fiction. What do you think happened? I honestly don't know. This deep dive has been a wild ride. But I tell you one thing, I'm not going to forget Jennifer Fairgate anytime soon. Me neither. And who knows, maybe one day someone out there will uncover the missing piece of this puzzle and finally give Jennifer Fairgate back her true identity. I hope so. Thanks for walking us through this fascinating case today. It's been a wild ride. And to everyone listening, if you have any thoughts on this case, be sure to check out the source material and let us know what you think really happened. Absolutely. Until next time.